Are you looking for a way to add chat-based experiences for your SharePoint data? Well, you should check out SharePoint Agents. With SharePoint Agents, you can enable your users to get answers fast in a conversational experience. This avoids everyone from having to go hunt through your SharePoint site and nested folders to find the key information that they're looking for. To create and use SharePoint Agents, you do need a Microsoft 365 Copilot license. Everyone that wants to create these and use them will need that license. There's also pay-as-you-go options that are rolling out as well. When you have that necessary license, every SharePoint site will come with a pre-made agent that's scoped to your site. You can click on the Copilot button in the upper right-hand corner to open up that site agent. It'll have some sample prompts here for you to get started. And of course, you can ask it any questions here about the data on your site. So I can ask it who is on our leadership team, and it will search through all the information on the site, whether that be on site pages or within files in a document library and return an answer here. And it's going to cite the sources of where it got that information from. We see we have one reference and it got that right here from the onboarding homepage. But of course, this isn't all we can do with SharePoint agents of using this default agent that we get. We can create our own custom agents. So say I wanted to create an agent that only answers questions about specific files or specific document libraries, or even pulls in information from other SharePoint sites. I can do that by creating my own custom agent. Let's go over to our document library and we'll see how to create a more targeted agent for specific documents. Within all of your document libraries, you'll have this option here on the toolbar to create an agent. In this case, this agent would search anything in this document library, but I could be more granular. I could select specific folders or even files within the folders. So if I were to select just the sales and marketing folder and then choose create an agent, it's going to target only that specific folder as a knowledge source for my agent. But I'm going to go back and we'll create an agent that's targeted to everything in this document library. So I'll choose create an agent and then we'll just first go ahead and open up this agent to see what we get out of the box. So it's going to open up that Copilot panel on the right hand side and we'll have our new documents agent. Now, if we click this drop down, we can toggle back and forth from the onboarding agent that we have, the default one that searches everything on the site and this particular documents agent. So I can ask us something like what health insurance do we have? And that's information that should be here in our HR and policies folder in one of our documents. And we'll see if it can find that information. And there you go. It's replied with the information of what plan options that we have. Again, with the reference here to our benefits overview, which is a PDF stored in this document library. Now, if I want to, I can customize this agent even further. So with the Copilot tab open, I can click on these three dots and I can choose this edit option and go to the back end of this agent to make some additional configurations. I probably wanna change the name because documents agent isn't very descriptive. So I'll just call this onboarding docs agent. We could change the logo if we want to. It's going to default for your SharePoint site logo, but we could override that with anything that we want. And then we have a description that it fills in by default, but we can customize this as well. So I'll just say based on content from our onboarding documents. And then you'll notice we have a few extra tabs. One, we have the sources tab. So if I want to add additional information here, this is where I would do that. So right now it's only using this particular document library as a knowledge source to pull information from. But as you can see, not only can I add additional document libraries, folders, or specific files, I can also reference other SharePoint sites. So we're talking about referencing other sites here. So this is probably a good time to mention how permissions work with these SharePoint agents. It's only going to return information from those sites and files that you have access to. So make sure as you're referencing other files, adding in other SharePoint sites, that you and anyone that will be using this agent has the necessary access to those sites and files. I'm gonna leave this as is because all of my information is stored in this document library for this particular use case. And then let's take a look at this behavior tab. This is another thing you'll definitely want to update. A few things that we can update here is first the welcome messaging. You'll notice when we initially loaded up that agent in the Copilot tab, it had a default message for us and we can customize that here. So I can just tweak this and say, welcome to the onboarding agent. And then we can also customize those starter prompts. The ones that we have here aren't really specific to our use case. So I can override these with some common questions that people might ask this agent. So I'll put in one for what healthcare benefits do we get? Maybe another one for what products do we sell? And maybe another one for what trainings do I need to take? And then finally, you'll probably want to customize the instructions. It comes with some very default instructions here, letting the agent know that it needs to provide accurate information about the content and reply in a formal tone. That's a good starting point, but we probably want something more specific here. So I've written out some more detailed instructions that I'm going to paste in here. 
And a good format for these instructions for your SharePoint agent is to start by defining the role. The role for this agent is to assist employees of April's Acoustic Cafe with onboarding related questions using information exclusively from the SharePoint knowledge source. So that's another thing I'm doing here is making sure that it's only returning information from the knowledge source that's provided. Then I'm going to put in the specific task. So what exactly do I want this agent to do? So provide accurate and concise information about company policies, benefits, IT resources, training, and other onboarding topics. Another thing I'm doing is asking it to ask follow-up questions if necessary. So rather than just getting stuck if it can't find something or it's unsure what you're asking, giving it that permission to ask follow-up questions and use that data. And then finally, when you're writing out your instructions, also provide it with rules. Are there any boundaries that it needs to act within? So the rules for this are, again, to only use that approved SharePoint source and don't provide any information outside of that. Another thing I'm adding here is if the question is unclear or it can't answer, instead of giving a generic, sorry, I can't answer that, give them a more specific message asking them to escalate to this email address. Now, before we move on and save this, I want to point out one more thing, and that's this button here to add advanced customization in Copilot Studio. This button is going to allow you to expand the possibilities of your SharePoint agent. If you start using your agent and realize that you want to add additional knowledge, maybe outside of SharePoint, whether that be public websites or Dataverse data, or maybe you want to have it perform actions and go write information to another SharePoint list or send an email or things like that, that's what Copilot Studio is geared for. It gives us a low-code way to be able to build more robust agents. But word of warning, when you do click that button, that does mean you're going to need to have Copilot Studio licensing. This functionality isn't included in the Microsoft 365 Copilot license. I'm gonna save this for a future video, but for now, let's finish configuring our customizations to our SharePoint agent. So I'm going to click Save, and that will apply those changes and we'll test it out. Now we'll see in the Copilot window that my name has been updated to Onboarding Docs Agent, and we have those prompts that I customized, so I can click on one of these, like what products do we sell, and get a quick answer there from the information in my document library. So there's a quick summary of the type of items we sell with a reference to our menu and recipes. And I can ask additional questions like, what software can we use? Now it's helping us get those quick answers. So you might have noticed after I created this agent that a new file showed up in our document library. So all of these agents that you create are going to show up as a .agent file. And the great thing about this is that means you can treat this just like any other file in your document libraries. So if I want to easily manage access, I can just click on the share button, see everyone that has access, and add additional people. The other cool thing about it is we have version history just like every other document. Now we can obviously use these agents right here in SharePoint with the co-pilot button and selecting our agent like we did for the one that we just created. But if we need to, we can also put these inside of a Teams chat. So if we wanted to do that, we can open up our agent in the co-pilot sidebar, click on the three dots and select copy link for Teams. Now this does only work in chats. It's not going to work in your channels, but you can just paste in that link in the chat of your choice. And then you'll see this add to this chat button. And now we'll see this message that the agent is here. And now I can start chatting with it. So there are those sample prompts that we put in. Can ask it what trainings do I need to take? And we can just add reference the agent in the chat. And we'll see it actually reply with that fallback message that I customize in our agent instructions. Another thing you can do is customize how your agents that you build show up. So this onboarding docs agent that I created right now is showing under this recent heading. But if I wanted to promote it and make it available and pin to the top, I can do that. So let's talk permissions for a bit. If you want to be able to create your own agents, you will need at least edit access in your SharePoint site to be able to do that. And if you're an administrator, you have even more capability, like the ability to promote and approve certain agents. So if you want a different agent that you build and customize to be the default agent rather than that one that's automatically created for you, you could do that. So if I want this docs agent to be our default experience, since I'm a site collection admin, I can click on the three dots in our co-pilot window here, and I can choose to set this as approved. When I do that, it's going to move this to the site assets folder. So I'm gonna to click to confirm that move to promote this to an approved agent. And now if I open back the Copilot window again, 
we'll see that that agent is now listed in this approve for this site bucket. But if I want this to be the default experience, I can select our agent again, click on those three dots. And now that I've made it an approved agent, I have the ability to set this as the site default. So we're gonna set that. And now when anyone launches that Copilot button in the SharePoint site, this will be the default agent that gets initiated. And the reason we do this is because we actually can't customize the default agent that you get in your SharePoint sites. So if we wanna do anything custom, we need to create our own and then promote that to default. And with our onboarding docs agent as the default one now, I can always come in here, click on the three dots and edit this to make any additional changes. Now there is a limitation in SharePoint agents with the number of sources that you can include. So if we go back to the configuration in the sources tab here, we're going to be limited to 20 different sources. And a source can either be 20 individual files, that could be 20 folders with several files underneath all those folders, or it could be 20 sites or a mix and match of all the above. And as far as file support for your SharePoint agents, it supports most file types, so PDFs, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, loop files, and text files, but it doesn't support currently images, meeting recordings and other videos, and OneNote notebooks. So just be aware if you have any of those in your site, those aren't going to be able to be referenced by the agent. And the big one, they also don't currently use data in list. So if you're hoping to be able to build an agent that can reference data from your SharePoint list, sorry, it can't do that right now. And one more thing I wanna point out when you're using these agents, if you click on these three dots in your Copilot chat window, you can see all of your chat history that's saved here, which is accessible only to you. So if you wanna go back and see quick answers to things that you've asked previously, you can just click on one of those and it will load the chat and give you that answer. Another great thing about SharePoint agents is they're context aware. I just mentioned that this doesn't work with SharePoint list data. So when I'm on the SharePoint list, I'm unable to chat with the agent. But if I switch over to this page and open up my agent, I'm able to chat with it again. So it does have the context of whether you're on a page, a document library, or a list. So that's how easy it is to get started with SharePoint agents to chat over your SharePoint data. I'd love to hear what you think about this and if you plan on using it. So drop a note in the comments and let me know. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and click that subscribe button so you can be alerted for more videos.